you realize that we're walking around systems in society and much of what consumes most of our days is not some natural order, says BJ Miller, commenting on the end of life and life itself. Uh, today we're looking at Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss. Uh, have you been following along? Because we're looking at the third section of the book today, which is wise, healthy, wealthy, and wise. What Tim does, Tim Ferriss, is he goes and talks to the most genius people in the world, and he's put them and their secrets in this book. And so we're counting down the top ideas in the wise section. Number one, Maria Popova at brainpickings.org often reads a book a day and in so doing, knows how to live a good life. She shares with Tim how famed neurologist and writer Oliver Sacks used to put a piece of paper on the wall by his desk that simply said in all caps, NO, with an exclamation point. It was to remind himself to decline invitations that took away from his writing time. I think that that is the best idea ever. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go get a marker, I'm gonna put a big no, I'm gonna start writing no all over my walls, and I'm gonna point, point at the no if anybody tries to come say hi to me. Number two, Tim then asked Maria, what is the worst advice you see or hear given in your trade or expertise? Uh, upon which he answered, follow your dreams. It's impossible to do without self-knowledge, which takes years. You discover your dream or sense of purpose in the very act of walking the path, which is guided by equal parts choice and chance. Number three, Jocko Willink is described by Tim Ferriss as one of the scariest human beings imaginable. He spent 20 years in the U.S. Navy and commanded SEAL Team 3's Task Unit Bruiser, the most highly decorated special operations unit from the Iraq War, and you should read his book, Extreme Ownership. It's excellent. Tim asks a lot of stock questions that get great answers, and in this case, he asked, what would you put on a billboard? Jocko responded, my mantra is a very simple one, and that's discipline equals freedom. He also says, if you want to be tougher mentally, it is simple. Be tougher. Don't meditate on it. I'm reminded of uh, Wim Hof and the Seal, who lived with Jesse Itzler. Did you read Living with a Seal? You should really get that book. We learn from these guys that the cold water isn't cold, it's hot. You make the cold water hot in your mind. When you go outside, that weather doesn't suck. It's great. It's nice, hot Hawaii weather. If you're going through a tough situation, Jocko says that detaching yourself from the situation so you can see what's happening is absolutely critical. He says, sounds horrible, but it's almost like sometimes I'm not a participant in my own life. I'm an observer of that guy who's doing it. Being able to detach as a leader is critical. Number five, Sebastian Younger is the co-director of Restrepo about the platoon documentary of US soldiers in Afghanistan's Karangal Valley. Tim asked him a great question. How do you become a man in a world that doesn't require courage? Upon what she said, well, in terms of our communities and our society at home, we thankfully no longer have to organize young men and prepare them for group violence so they can survive. I mean, that's been the norm for two million years, either from predators or from other humans. And if you don't give young men a good and useful group to belong to, they will create a bad group to belong to. But one way or another, they're going to create a group and they're gonna find something, an adversary, where they can demonstrate their prowess and their unity. Number six, Sebastian says disasters and crises like 9-11 or the World War II bombings in London often results in dramatic decreases in suicide, violent crime, mental illness, symptoms, etc. And he says, that feeling of us buffers many people from their psychological demons. Number seven, for you world travelers, it's good for us to know that organized crime is now targeting airline passengers, which is good to know because my dad is now going on an airline. Great. They Google each name, create a list of apparent high value targets and arrive early to look for the right name on limo driver signs. And then they then threaten the actual limo drivers who are then replaced. Tim, uh, while talking to Mark Goodman, who heads the Future Crimes Institute, says that he uses Uber or pseudonyms for any car service pickups around the world. By using a made-up name for your car reservation, if you see a placard with your real name on it, then you know it's a setup, okay? So don't use your real name. Use your made-up name that you create, like Mr. Fox. This is not paranoia. This is the world we're living in now. Even if you're a success on the internet or something, I mean, you don't have to be a politician to be targeted, okay, Dad? Would you just listen to me for once? Number eight. I'm not single, but I'd want to know this if I was, so... Uh, Sammy Kamkar is this great hacker, and he became really good at online dating. He was good at this because he could optimize the code and crunch data. Anyway, in his data crunching, he learned that shirtless pics and animals, like on Tinder, were like crack. Tim didn't believe him, so they tested it. He took off his shirt, and he posed with a kitty. And apparently it works. Uh, 
Women like kitties. What if the women showed up for the date and you were still shirtless with a kitty? Um, hey, I thought this is what this is what you ordered. This is who I am, 24/7. I don't have an off switch, okay? Thank you so much for joining me today, and feel free to share this video with any of your friends. This book is so interesting. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and thumbs up button if you haven't already. Meanwhile, have a fantastic week. I'll see you next Friday. It was great, as always.